So in order to get better at making YouTube thumbnails, today I'm gonna to be trying to recreate one of my favorite Mr. Beast thumbnails, this one from scratch using Photoshop. So looking at this thumbnail, there's a lot visually going on here. In the foreground, we have Jimmy sort of hiding behind a brick wall, looking concerned, his shirt's all torn up, which kind of adds a story element as though he's been, you know, doing something rough to escape these guys and to hide from them. We then have the military guy right next to him, peeking around the corner of that brick wall, sort of looking, got an interesting expression on his face. Then we have the tank in that middle ground, which really communicates and drives home that military aspect of the video. And then right in the background, just another visual interest, which I've noticed Jimmy does a lot in his thumbnails, is we have this Black Hawk helicopter with someone rappelling down from it. And overall, all the colors pop really well. You have the black, the orange, the green, and then that sort of neutral sort of brown color with the blue sky in the background. And really, we have basically one, two, three, four, four key elements here. So a lot of things I'm gonna have to source images for, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And the first thing we need to do is to take a photo of myself looking concerned, wearing a black shirt that I can then rip up in Photoshop. So let's do that. So basically with this photo, I was just trying to match Jimmy's pose, make sure I'm looking into the camera, looking concerned and made sure that the image was well lit. And to do this, I used one Aperture 120D Mark II and then another side light to just add some fill to make the overall image quite bright and no dark shadows on my face because I really wanted to match Jimmy's look here. But now I have my photo, so let's jump on to the computer. Right, so I've also gone and found all the assets I need. So I found this tank image on Google, got a dirty sort of texture grunge that I can put on my face. I found this brick wall that we can use it to similar color and sort of that rough texture. This is sort of dirt ground texture, which we'll use for the background. The important one, the army guy, which is chasing me. I couldn't find one that's kind of exactly the same as Mr. Beast's thumbnail, but I did find this really cool one, in my opinion, maybe even slightly more dramatic and slightly better one from Shutterstock. And then finally, just some sort of sky texture that I can put in to make the clouds a little bit more interesting. I started off by dragging the assets into Photoshop. Then it was time to cut them out. So first off, We'll take the object selection tool, click select subject, and the AI is gonna do all the work for us. We'll just come in here, tidy up anything that it missed. So this spot here, we'll take that out too, because we want it to be looking clean and professional. Don't you love zooming in on Photoshop? You get some great views sometimes. And if you wanna know how I'm deselecting, all I'm doing is holding down the Alt key while using the polygon lasso tool. And basically I just come in here, complete the selection, and it takes it away from the overall selection. If you wanna to add to the selection, hold down the shift key, and that will add it to the selection if it's missed anything. All right, now we have that selection. We're just gonna come down and click mask and boom. He's there, ready to put in where we need him. I then did the same process with the rest of my assets and oh boy, was my hair on point that day. Next up, I wanted to match Mr. Beast's layout. So I moved everything around until I got it just right. But I forgot the helicopter. So I went and found one and added it in. Instead of doing the opposite, and instead of doing the opposite, <laughs> wow. And instead of doing the object selection tool, which is gonna be really hard to cut this out, you know, you got the helicopter blades, which are kind of a blurry with motion blur. You got that really fine lines where the guys are pelling down it. We're gonna go to the blending mode and instead change it to darker color. And we're just gonna bump down the opacity to 71%, and we might play around with levels a little bit later. But you can see here now, it's kind of blending in. Need to make it a little bit smaller though. At this point, the thumbnail is looking pretty shit. So to fix that, I started by adjusting the color of the bricks. So it needs to be much more orange, so we're gonna use a hue saturation adjustment layer. Alt click to clip it specifically to the brick wall. So I don't want it to affect the entire image, just that brick wall. So I'm gonna come down to colorize, drag this over to sort of that orange and then bump up the saturation quite a bit because Mr. B's saturation is, is quite high for this image. Bring it across a little bit, not too much. Drop down the opacity just a little bit so it blends in. But that also changed the color of the cement which made it not look like a brick wall and it looks ridiculous. So I needed to paint that back in on the mask using a brush tool. I then made the brick wall a little more jagged as though a battle had destroyed parts of it. But now I needed to fix up the photo of myself because it's looking a little rough. I think the first thing we need to do is add some curves to really bring down that light because I made it a little bit too bright and I need to sort of adjust it to make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer, definitely alt click it so it's just applying specifically to me and to my image and I'm just gonna drag down the shadows. Not too much, just a little bit maybe Maybe there, that looks pretty good. But if we look at Mr. Beast's photo for his thumbnail, the sort of left side of his face is in shadow, whereas mine is bright just because of how I set up my lights. 
That was a mistake on my behalf. So what can I do here? Well, I am going to actually paint in some shadows using a brush. So I'm just gonna select a brush, make the hardness zero, make the size a little bit bigger, make sure it's a soft round one. Alt select on a shadow color, sort of bring it down a little bit more. And I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply. I'm gonna clip it to the layer. Now with clipping, you can do it as many layers on top as you want. You just have to make sure you click alt click and all of the layers above are all alt clicked and it will just apply to that one base layer. So I'm just gonna come in, paint in, that's way too much, maybe 20%. And we're just gonna paint in a little bit. Then to match Mr. Beast, I made my shirt a little bit darker. To really integrate myself into the image and make it look realistic, I had to now add a shadow. This was really easy to do, just selecting a dark color off the wall and painting it on with a soft brush set to 20% opacity. I made sure it was darker the closer I was to the wall to make it look more realistic. Finally, I changed the blend mode of the layer to multiply to make it look a little bit more darker and less of that orange color. I then touched up the shadows on my face before giving myself a much needed haircut. And to add a story element, I needed to add some dirt to my face. I did this with a simple texture image I found on Google, set it to multiply, and then masked it out to fit my face. Make it kind of, you know, you want it to be subtle. You don't want it to be overpowering. Now to make my image pop and also match Mr. Beast, I also added a rim light. And all I had to do was simply paint it on with a soft brush set to white. And I always find it easier to do this using my Wacom tablet rather than a mouse. Now to make it look more realistic, I then smudged it using a bristly brush under the Legacy Pack. And the difference it made was well worth the effort. All right, so that's looking pretty good right now. But now, I hate to do it. I'm gonna do something a little bit cringy. Mr. Beast tends to enhance his facial features. So you'll notice that oftentimes his eyes are really bright and so are his teeth. And you can see here that, uh, my teeth, they ain't so bright. I've been drinking a bit too much tea and coffee and the lighting just isn't hitting them properly. So I'm gonna artificially brighten my teeth and paint them in, which is gonna look really weird up close, but I think from a distance, it's really gonna sell it. So basically all I'm gonna do here is just create a new layer, get a brush, make the hardness this time around 83%, make the brush size really small, come to my mouth, which you guys all we want to look at. This is really kind of confronting actually. I'm going to need therapy after this one. And I'm literally just going to paint in my teeth. Despite this being ridiculous, it does convey the emotion better, as though my teeth are clenched and I'm really worried about this army guy chasing me. Now ladies, it's time to tear up my shirt. I did this by just painting it in with a hard brush. Now to get the color just right with my skin tone, with the brush tool selected, all you need to do is hold down Alt and click on the color in the image that you want your brush to become. This trick will save you a bunch of time in the future. That really added more drama to the image but it needed to be blended better. Ah, much better. And then there's really only one more thing left to do on myself right here. And that is to literally just add in a little logo that says, Mr. Beast, as though I've bought his shirt. Gonna make it the same font that he normally uses, Comica Axis. I think I might warp it a bit too to make it fit in and drag it underneath the cutout. So now, that actually looks pretty good. To blend everything together, I then added some white haze, almost like dust was over top the whole image. At this point, it was really starting to come together nicely. So now to match Mr. Beast's thumbnail, I need to make the army guy a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more green. So I'm gonna use a hue and saturation layer, alt click it, click colorize, drag it across to where it's a green color, bring across the saturation, now, I don't want it to be too overpowering. i bring it down a little bit. And I'm literally just going to paint in or paint out the parts that I don't want. So obviously, you know, I don't want his face to be green. That looks ridiculous. Also gonna come in here now and I'm going to paint out painstakingly all the brown spots because they really sell home the camouflage and I need to have that contrast. Now to make the color of the camouflage pop a little bit better and be a little bit more contrasty, I also added a solid color adjustment layer. Set it to a nice brown color and copied the mask from the hue saturation layer and just simply inverted it and got rid of any parts that I didn't want. And this made it look way better. Next up, he needs a shadow. At this point, I realized I really needed to extend the brick wall to separate myself from the military guy. 
So I'm actually gonna duplicate my brick wall and I'm going to drag it across. I'm just gonna select this little corner bit here, mask it out, adjust the size so it all works. And I can make it rough like I did before to really sell home the fact that we're in a war. And just like that, it now looks a little bit better. Then because I have a rim light and the military guy was also going to have one, I needed to paint it on the brick wall also. And then on the soldier too. A little bit of adjustment curves always helps and I also played around with the hue and saturation to get it just right. The tank thankfully didn't need much work, so I could focus on just improving the background. First off, a levels adjustment to wash everything out to provide more contrast and also sell the distance and realism. Then I added in a fake sun using a soft white brush and applied the linear dodge add blend mode. I also realized I needed to adjust the layout ever so slightly and bring down that shadow. It was way too dark. The final touches I did using camera raw filter, adjusting the hue saturation, the overall curves of the image and adding in some grain. And there we have it, my first recreation of a Mr. Beast thumbnail. I learned so much doing this process, but I wanna hear your opinion. Which one do you think was better? I think I know the answer to that one, but where do you think I could improve on my skill, on my craft and make this thumbnail a little bit closer to Mr. Beast? Let me know in the comment section down below. Peace and remember, you're only one video away. See you in the next one.